So the first thing I want to do is really debunk what I think of as very traditional wisdom when it comes to the valley, uh, which is the wisdom that if you're up and to the right, you're all good. <laughs> and we all know the up and to the right curve. We think about it when we grow our companies. But I would submit that there's also an up and to the right framework we have when we think about scaling ourselves. You know, we've been taught to believe by the valet that the, the founder reigns supreme on the entrepreneurial aspects of running a company and that a quote unquote, a professional CEO comes in when you need to sort of bring in executive chops. And so there's this notion of a journey from, from founder to CEO. Um, and I think when we think about scaling ourselves and how we uh, operate with our teams and our companies as they scale and grow, I'm not sure this traditional wisdom really serves us very well because it sets up a paradigm that I think is rather uh, untrue when it comes to how you really operate as you scale your businesses and teams. So the first thing I want you to do is really let go of some of this traditional wisdom about what are the responsibilities of a founder or a CEO. Instead, the way I thought about my own journey and I would say in almost any company I've been at, whether it was Google, whether it was my own startup, or whether it was StubHub, I really have thought about the journey of a leader as one that looks far more like a sine wave than it does uh, like any sort of up into the right curve. And not only does it look like a sine wave, it looks like what I would call operating range. So what is it that I mean by operating range? I think that the job of any leader is actually not to play one role or the other, but to know which role to play when. And when you think about leaders who scale, they don't scale because they stay in just one quadrant. They often scale because they, I would say, develop and attune themselves to what their companies need from them from any point in time. And people who do this well are leaders who can operate, you know, when a company is small, they're leaders who can help take a company all the way through its journey. And they're leaders who are effective because they're multifaceted. Uh, so let's take a look at this slide for just a moment. Um, as, I, as I noted, sort of there's a competency range from being what I call entrepreneurial to executive. There's a knowledge range from having knowledge of the details up to the vision of the company. And at any point in time, the job of a leader is to actually know where in these kind of in these quadrants you need to skate to. Uh, the obvious question is, do you need to be good at everything? And the answer is no. Many of us have a natural place on a, on a graph like this where we you know, operate at our best. And we'll talk about that in a moment. There'll be other areas where we don't operate well, but our job is to navigate to those areas and to, in some cases, dive deep. And if we can't ask the questions ourselves, get the right question askers in a room. Often our job as a CEO is to ask the questions ourselves. And, you know, and one day we want to come in and put on our professional CEO hat and pull ourselves up out of the weeds because we need to go raise our next round of funding. And no matter how perfect the product is, if we don't have money in the bank, we can't scale. And other times there is no more important task than honestly being the pain in the ass CEO, you know, or leader who is, you know, sitting in, um, you know, with your teams looking at wireframes and trying to figure out what user feedback is telling you about, you know, where the product may be breaking down and its journey to delight the customer, right? So the thing I think that is most important as you think about scaling yourself and your team is to think about if nothing else, this one principle, which is, you know, forego this idea that up and to the right is the journey of a leader and embrace the notion of operating range, which is your job is to be attuned to what the organization might need from you at any point in time and to be willing to play those different roles, even if they're outside your comfort zone, because mostly it's your willingness and your attunement to where you need to go that is the difference between being a successful leader and not. It's not about being perfect at all these things. It's about leading the company and yourselves on a journey to be able to identify the hot spots of the business and move there and put your energy there, whatever that might mean. 